거고. 여러분 숙제는 그 페이스북으로 모든 거는 다 올리거든요. 여러분들 잠깐 페이스북을 보여줄게요. 숙제는 음. 제가 일주일에 한개 정도만 가급적으로 올리려고 하는데 이번 주 숙제는 지난주 월요일 거, 오늘 거 합쳐서 그 여기에 있어요. 그 위크2로 위크2에 더보기 눌러보시면 그 여러분들 이제 어제하고 오늘 한거 대충 리스트만 정리돼 있고 나중에 여기다가 제가 페이스북 수업 그 녹화된 거는 이제 여기다 또 올릴 거예요. 그래서 이거 보시면 되고 여러분 여기 숙제 업로드 링크가 있는데 이거 눌러보시면 이제 여러분 숙제 이번 주 숙제가 뭐냐 하면 그, 그 큐라 파일을 올려야 돼요. 라이노 파일이 아니고 라이노에서 엑스포트 한 다음에 라이노에서 엑스포트 된 거를 큐라에서 다시 열어서 큐라에서 3D 프린팅 파일을 만들 수가 있거든요. 그게 아마 그 큐라가 그 제가 좀 이따 설명을 해드릴게요. 그거를 이제 올려야 되는데 뭘 올려야 되냐면 오늘 저기 큐브를 두 개를 만들어야 돼요. 하나는 1cm짜리 하나는 5cm짜리를 하나 올려야 되고 그 다음에 오늘 제가 그 암놈 순놈 그 블럭 만드는 거를 알켜드릴 텐데 요거를 갖다가 총 4개를 올려야 돼요. 4개를 올리면 저희 조교 선생님들이 아마 3D 프린터는 해주고 여러분이랑 아마 다음 주에 아마 확인을 할 수가 있을 거예요. 여러분들이 와서 직접 하면 좋은데 올 수가 없으니까 저희가 대신 3D 프린트는 해줄게요. 요게 숙제고 요 4개의 파일을 여기 링크에 올려야 되는데 여러분 요 링크 눌러보시면 못 들어갈 거예요. 암호가 걸려있거든요. 암호는 영어로 make예요. 메이크 철자 모르는 사람 없겠죠? 네, 그러면 여기다가 여러 위크2가 있거든요. 제가 이제 매주 폴더를 하나씩 만들 건데 이 위크2에다가 올리면 돼요. 근데 여러분 올릴 때 가급적이면 파일 네임을 템플릿을 어떻게 해줬으면 좋겠냐면 뭐 아무거나 하나 올립시다. 그 제가 여기 하나 이렇게 올리 잠깐만요. 뭐 아무 파일이나 하나 어? 올릴 수가 없나? 잠깐만요. 파일 하나만 올려볼게요. 음... 어? 안 올라가시는데? 이거 제가 확인 한 번만 해볼게요. 그... 아마 링크를 다시 보내줘야 돼. 확인 한번 했는데 다시 여기서 하니까 안 되네. 음... 어디 보자. 잠깐만요. 아, 여기는 지금 구글 다큐멘트 화면이라서 그런가? 아, 이제 줌 화면이라서 안 되나? 잠깐만요. 음... 이렇게 개방 폴더인데 업로드가 안 되네. 자, 공유 중지 잠깐만 해볼게요. 이게 공유 때문에 안 올라가는데, 잠깐만요. 음... 음, 이렇게 또안 올라가지네. 요거 제가 확인 한 번만 해보고 다시 알려줄게요. 요거 파일 이름을 어떻게 해주시면 좋냐면, 네, 여러분 파일 이름을 여러분들 풀네임을 써주시고요. 여기서 받고 있어. 파일 네임을 여러분들 풀 네임 저 같으면 어, 주홍 뭐 주홍 여러 파일이 총두 어, 개가 올라가야 되는데 슬래시 하고 위크 원 다시 뭐 큐브. 이게 줌 때문에 안 되는 것 같은데 제가 여기다가 써드릴게요. 
채팅창에다 쳐야 돼 있어야 되겠구나. 음. 여러분 채팅창을 채팅창에다가 파일 이름 갖다가 여러분들 풀 네임하고 슬래시하고 어, 그다음에 위크 01 그리고 뭐 큐브 이런 식으로 올려주세요. 그래서 여러분들 누가 올렸는지 그 다음에 숙제가 몇 주째 올린 숙제인지 그 숙제 내용이 뭔지 여러분 이제 그 3D 큐브는 하나 파일 하나에다가 다 올려주시면 되고 나머지 하나는 그두 번째 파일은 다시에다가 뭐 블록 이런 식으로 두 번째 거 파일 하나를 또다 넣어주셔도 돼요. 두개 파일을 준비해서 이렇게 올려주시면 돼요. 나중에. 네. 그러면 이제, 이제 들어가 슬슬 천천히 들어가 봅시다. 잠깐 간단하게 복습을 좀 하자면 어, 몇 가지를 설명을 좀 해주고 싶은 게 있는데 여러분들 그 3D 모델을 만들 때 제일 중요한 것 중에 하나가 뭐냐면 유닛이에요. 그 여러분 실컷 만들어냈는데 나중에 그 크기가 다를 수 있거든요. 그래서 그 크기 확인을 해야 되는데 그 큐라 같은 경우도 보게 되면 그 보통 큐라의 디폴트 유닛은 밀리미터인데 그 라이너 같은 경우에는 디폴트 유닛이 따로 없고요. 여러분 맨 처음에 파일을 열게 되면 그 뉴우 같은 걸 하거나 파일 열면 여기 보면 지금 유닛이 나오죠. 여러분들이 3D 프린터로 하는 거의 대부분의 거는 스몰 오브젝트의 밀리미터면 돼요. 어, 혹시 나중에 그 학생 들을 걸 해준다 그러면 Okay, so you need is the most important one when you're working with any 3D geometries. And then so far, any files that you're going to make is millimeter. And a small object will be enough for your all your project. And then to see this one, I just restart from file and click new. And I just simply select small object millimeters. And then if you open it, then the default unit will be set as millimeter. So your millimeter가 되고요. 만약에 여러분들이 그, 어, 막 하다가 보니까, 어, 내 유닛을 확인을 체크를 안 했다. 그럼 나중에 바꿀 수도 있는데, 그러고 싶으면 어디로 가야 되냐면, 툴에 들어가서, 옵션에 들어가면, 여기 그 유닛이라는 항목이 있죠. 여기서 모델 유닛을 밀리미터로 바꿀 수도 있어요. 어, 보통 그 데시멀과 프랙탈이 있는데 피트 앤 인치스 있는데 요거는 이제 미국에서 쓰는 거고 우리는 그냥 다 데시멀 쓰면 돼요. 그리고 톨러런스가 0.001인데 이거는 그 밀리미터 이하 소수점 셋째 짜리 쓴다라는 거고 앵글 톨러런스는 1도까지 쓴다는 건데 사실 360도면 그게 정확하지는 않죠. 근데 뭐 그냥 어차피 3D 프린터의 노즐의 레졸루션이 이 정도로 안 나오니까 요 정도면 괜찮아요. Okay. A second method to check and change your unit uh, is go to tools and click options. And then there is actually a unit section here under the document and properties section. And you can change your unit uh, from any other uh, unit to millimeters here. And then tolerance, these two tolerance will be fine. And then you can actually use decimal. Uh, and just press OK. 근데 여러분 이런 경우가 하나가 있어요. 어떤 경우가 있냐면 여러분이 뭔가를 이거를 만들었는데 이게 유닛이 미터인 경우가 있죠. 잠깐 미터로 잠깐 바꿔볼게요. 여러분 실수로 해서 이 미터로 바꿨다가 올게요. 자 문제가 이제 이게 나와요. 여기 보면 모델 유닛이 바뀌었는데. 밀리미터에서 미터로 바뀌었는데 스케일 할 거야 안할 거야 라는 거를 물어보거든요. 이게 무슨 뜻이냐면 지금 현재 그 실제 사이즈는 어떻게 되냐면은 그냥 대충 재봤을 때 13이 나오는데 유닛이 지금 우리가 모르잖아요. 근데 지금 현재 우리가 요거 사용하는 유닛은 예를 들어서 미, 지금 미터로 돼 있어요. 근데 이걸 우리가 만약에 그 밀리미터로 바꾼다 그러면 이제 스케일을 할 거야 말 거야 라는 내용이 나오는데 이게 무슨 소리냐면 
기존의 그 사이즈는 13m였죠. 근데 이거 밀리미터로 바꾸는데 스케일을 할 거야? 라고 물으면 이 1000배를 한다는 소리잖아요. 그래서 이걸 누르면 어떻게 되냐면 은 미터로 바꾸면서 이 13을 그 10, 어, 다시 한번 해볼게요. 크기가 지금 굉장히 커졌다라는 거예요. 그러니까 지금 아까 우리가 그 그리려고 했던 게 미터 단위에서 13을 그렸는데 어, 스케일을 바꿀 때이 크기를 그대로 적용을 하고 싶으시면 스케일을 쓰면 되고요. 이걸 만약에 적용을 하기 싫다. 아 이게 13미터인데 어, 나 사실은 나, 나 사실은 알고 보면 나 13밀리미터로 하고 싶은 거였어. 그럼 스케일을 안 하면 되는 거예요. 요두 개의 차이가 있는데 여러분이 이거 헷갈리겠다. 그럼 어떻게 하면 되냐면 스케일을 한번 해보고 길이를 재보고 스케일을 안 해보고 스케일을 재면 돼요. 어려운 문제는 아니에요. 그래서 요 스케일을 할수 있다 없다 그 차이가 있다라는 거. 그래서 지금 보면 이거 스케일로 1000배가 된 거예요. 그래서 지금 이게 어, 사이즈는 이제 현재 유닛은 밀리미터인데 원래는 아까 13미터였잖아요. 그러니까 지금 13만 밀리미터로 지금 스케일이 스케일업 된 거예요. 요 차이가 있다라는 거. 요런 거 하기 싫다. 그러면 여러분 처음부터 유닛을 항상 체크를 하도록 하세요. 요런 에러를 방지하기 위해서는. 네, 요거 생각하는 거할수 있다라는 거. Okay, so uh, in case if you didn't check your unit and then you may need to change its size, you can actually change also go to tools and options. And then you can change uh, any other unit to meter. And then the problem is it will ask you whether you want to change its size or not. So when you OK to scale up or scale down, just press yes, meaning that actually in terms of scale, it will maintain the same size. But if you don't click it, it will actually maintain its number of original number but simply it will change the unit and then if you don't want to be confused by this just simply check your unit whenever you open uh, your first uh, document 그래서 요거 요거 하는 거를 좀 주의를 하세요 그래서 항상 시작할 때 여러분이 제일 먼저 해야 될 일은 이제 유닛을 항상 체크하는 거예요 그래서 이제 다시 밀리미터로 바꾸고 이제 상관이 없죠. 아무것도 없으니까. 그래서 시작을 한번 해보도록 할게요. 지금부터. 네, 그래서 처음에 우리가 지난주 했던 거를 잠깐 복습을 해보면 큐브를 만드는 거 있잖아요. So the first thing is to simply review what we did uh, on last Monday. We simply make a cube which is simply click box and this box will require you to click corner and second corner and height. So I click this one and then it asks you first corner of base. I just simply, you can place any location in the top view. However, I just click zero. And then it will locate the first point at actually zero and zero uh, location. 여러분, 맨 처음에 베이스가 어디야? 할때 그냥 0을 치고 엔터를 누르시면 0, 0에 그냥 딱 찍혀요. 어, 제가 되게 항상 선호하는 방법 중에 하나예요. 그리고 어, 이게 뭐냐면 어덜 코너가 어디야? 또는 랭스가 뭐야? 라고 물어보잖아요. So, so you can actually click anywhere to decide other corner point or I just simply type 10mm to make a 1cm cube. 그리고 이제 width를 물어보죠. And then it asks again about the width of the cube so i just type 10 and then it asks you what is the height so i just type 10 and okay 그래서 여러분들 요까지는 되게 이게 지난 지난 월요일 날한 거예요 어려운 거는 아무것도 없죠 네 요거를 이제 익스포트 여러분이 해야 될 거는 뭐냐면 요거 5cm 짜리 하나 더 만들어야 되는데 잠깐 빨리 보여주자면 so what you have to do today and this week is create another cube So I just repeat the same process. 요거 누르고 여러분 여기 어디다 타이핑을 해도 되고요. 
뭐 클릭하면 되고 저는 다시 그냥 0에다 할게요. 0에다 하고 I just press I type 0 and then I just type 50 and 50 and 50. So I create a 5cm cube. 이거 3, 5cm짜리 만들고 여러분 요거 제가 셀렉트를 한번 한 다음에 마우스 버튼을 누른 상태에서 그냥 움직일 거예요. 그럼 그냥 움직여요. 여기 무브 할수 있는 간단한 방법인데 이런 상태에서 여러분들 그냥 엑스포트 하면 돼요. 근데 이제 여기서 하나를 제가 더 가르쳐 주고 싶은 게 있는데 뭐냐면 and after unit the second most important feature in Rhino is actually this one called object snap. 여러분 아래 보시면 그리드 스냅도 있고 올소라는 것도 있고 플래너라는 것도 있고 스마트 트랙, 건버, 레코드 뭐 이런 되게 많은데 그 다른 거는 사실은 방해될 때가 되게 많고 오브젝트 스냅이 제일 자주 쓰는 것 중에 하나예요. 그아 오케이, so Ishan, so are you following us? Oh yes, I just joined uh, because I just finished my uh first class i'm sorry okay uh don't worry so whenever you late uh this class i will record my teaching and then probably i upload it to the youtube and then okay. just check the youtube link okay uh one thing okay so your today's assignment is actually uh you need to submit two files One thing is the submitting the Cura file of these two cubes okay. as a one file. And another one I'm going to teach is I'm going to, I will show you how to design a Lego brick, Lego block, male and female side, okay. and then upload that, those two geometries in one Cura file. And one quick thing that uh, I need to show you is that Um, and it's in the So the thing that uh, always check unit before you start your file. The second thing you have to care about is actually using of this object to snap. Uh, object snap is giving you the option of selecting object based on its end point and near point or point object or midpoint or center or intersection. or perpendicular point or tangent object tangent of an object so to act 이게 이거 뭐 어떻게 가능하냐면 자 여러분들 제가 잠깐 한번더 보여 줄게요. 자 이거 선택을 하고 제가 움직이려고 하는데 요거 움직이려고 하면은 move라는 명령어를 쓰면 돼요. If you want to move any object simply type move Alternatively, you can simply type M and then you l l have all the comments that a comment start with M and then I just click M here. 그러면 여러분들 이거 어디서 어디까지 옮길 거야? 라고 물어보거든요. Then it will ask you to move from where to another point where. So now I have to select a point which is the origin point, which is from point. And then in that case, if I try to select any point here, 여기 보면 제가 가까이 가면 이게 자석처럼 자동적으로 end point로 끌려가요. So I don't know whether you recognize it or not. Since I turned on this object snap option below here, you can turn it off here. When I turn it off, Just wherever I click is the place will become the from point. 제가 이거 오브젝트 스냅을 끄면 그냥 이게 특별히 제가 클릭하는 곳이 시작하는 곳이고요. 오브젝트 스냅을 키면 여기 특정 옵션에 가서 선택이 돼요. So when I activate object snap, it'll, it'll kind of like magnetic effect. It'll just bring your uh, mouse point to the end point of an object. This one is extremely useful because when you move one corner point to another corner point exactly. So 이렇게 되면 여러분들 딱 정확하게 아 코너 포인트에서 코너 포인트로 이동을 하고요. 
반복을 하자면, if I repeat one more time, I just type M and enter. Then actually, if I move around somewhere in the midpoint here, because this mid option is checked, it will try to select the midpoint of this line. So object point is extremely useful when you select the edge or the end point or the center point or tangent point of an object, which is normally you are, you may be frequently use this kind of feature. So I always activate this object snap all the time. 그리고 제가 요거, and then 요거를 갖다가 한, 요 붙어 있으면 3D 프린팅이 안 되잖아요. So please keep some space because otherwise it'll, uh, it'll kind of 3D print as a one object. Another option that I want to show you, 또 다른 건 뭐가 있냐면, 여러분 지금은 이게 자유롭게 움직이잖아요. So this one is kind of like freely move around this area. And take a look at this one. When I move it on the top view, no matter where I move on, if you check up a front view, the G doesn't really change. So basically when I move on the top view, it just move on XY plane. If I move front, no, it just kind of move around X, Y point of front, meaning that if you check up a top view, it doesn't really move around. So make sure that in which viewpoint you are moving around, and then it will, depending on your viewport, X will, sometimes X will be zero, and Y will be zero, or G will be zero. 근데 여기서는 제가 지금 탑 뷰에서만 움직일 거고, so I just move around top view. And as soon as I press shift button, now I can only move either x axis or y axis only. So this one, shift button give you a constraint to either one of these two axes. 그러니까 여러분들 x 쪽으로 수평 이동을 하고 싶거나 Y 쪽으로 수평을 하고 싶으시면 Shift 버튼을 누르세요. 그러면 이제 그렇게 딱 움직일 수가 있어요. 그리고 굉장히 유용해요. This is highly useful. So and then what I'm going to do is so it, and 그리고 여기 됐죠. 그리고 여러분들 보면 Point to Move to인데 7.7이라고 돼 있죠. 이게 무슨 소리냐면 So if you read this command line here, it will move. 7.772 millimeter away. So now here, what I'm going to do is I will type here as 10 and enter. Then now it only move 10 millimeter away from the front point. 여러분들 거리를 갖다가 제한을 주고 싶으시면 여기다 10이라고 치고 움직이면 돼요. So now I only can move 10 millimeter away from the origin point. And then if I press shift again, I only move 10 millimeter away in either X axis or Y axis. So then I will just move this one 10 millimeter away in horizontal direction. So 여러분 10mm만 정확하게 제가 옮겼어요. So now I just finally move 10 millimeter away exactly from one corner point to another. 그래서 여기까지는 어려운 거 없죠. 요거 옮길 때 자, 첫 번째 다시 리뷰 잠깐 하자면 유닛 바꾸는 방법. 두 번째는 오브젝트 스냅을 써서 옮길 때 편하게 쓸수 있는 방법. 두 가지는 거의 항상 쓸 거예요. So please remember two things. The first one is how to change unit. You can change unit from tools, options and go to unit, and then you can change from here, from on one unit to another. Second one, but please remember that set unit as soon as you start your file. Second one, you may always want to activate object snap, and then you can, you, I recommend for you to check either, actually everything would be good, but these are most frequently selected options so far I'm going to use. 네, 그래서 여기까지 이거 하면 되고 자, 지금부터는 이제 export하는 법을 설명을 해드릴게요. So from now on, I will explain how to export this of geometries. 
요거 두개 선택을 할 거고요. So there are many different ways to select these options. 여러분 지난번에 설명을 해줬죠. 위에서 아래로 하는 방법. So selecting from left to top to lower bottom, or you can do in the reverse way. Either way will be fine. So first, select the target geometries first, then go to File, and then click Export Selected. And then you need to change the file format. So currently, it will export your file as Rhino format. Now I'm going to change your file either uh, the most frequently used file format for 3D printing is STL, stereolithography. 여러분, 3D에서 제일 많이 쓰는 게 STL이거든요. 그래서 이거 STL로 바꿔서 이름을 바꿔주고 저장을 할게요. So I will change uh, each file name, also file type as STL, and I just click OK. 그리고 이제 저장이 됐어요. In general, if it is simple, but uh, there's no problem at all. But here is that what this is what happened. So it says created a mesh with 24 points and 8 polygons. 이게 이제 여러분 이런 식으로 이게 export가 됐다라는 거예요. I will explain about what is mesh a little bit later. And then it says fully successfully saved as this this file. Sometimes, 이, 이 항상 이렇지는 않고요. 여러분들이 그 지오메트리가 복잡해지잖아요. If you have a highly complicated or sophisticated geometry, uh, it is not always, it is successfully saved. So make sure that uh, this message was written here. 이거 항상 이렇게 되지는 않아요. 안 되면, so if it, if it doesn't successfully save, you need to find reason and you need to find the problem. 그래서 이거 나중에 할 거고 또 이렇게 되면 이 메시지가 뜨면 이제 된 거예요. So I'll open Cura from now on. 아, Cura를 열게 되면 If you open a Cura, so we select our printer as Anycubic i3 Mega last time. All you have to do is a sim. 아, 여기 안 됐구나. 제가 공유해 드릴게요. So I'll change the share screen setting to Cura. And Cura watch up, so I you can see Cura from now on. Or you so and check that your 3D printer is selected i3 mega. i3 가 됐다는 거 보시고 generic PLA. So also the PLA material is selected. Check about these two things. You can actually change them. So 여러분들 요거 재료 바꿀 수가 있는데 there are many uh, different types of uh, actually materials. And then these are actually uh, the manufacturers of PLAs. So if you have, if you ordered a specific uh, PLA with your own money, you can actually change it uh, to this setting following your uh, brand's name and the type of material. However, all PLAs are kind of highly similar to each other. So you don't really need to change them. Still, there are some occasions that you may need to change your material type, such as 이로 바꿔야 될 때가 있는데 이거 언제 바꿔야 되냐면 in general, uh, shiny material and matte materials are quite different. 여러분 그 반짝이는 재료가 있고요. 반짝이지 않은 게 매트하다 그러죠. So matte material and shiny materials are a little bit different each other. 그리고 그 and color materials are I mean what I mean by so called bright colors such as red, yellow, greens, their features are a little bit different from white or black materials. 이게 그 색깔의 색깔이나 그 재질에 따라서 조금씩 다른 특성을 가지거든요. 그래서 그거 확인을 좀 해야 될 거예요. 보시면 so now you probably see that black and gray. Purple and whites are actually differentiated, meaning that because uh, to change the color of 3D printer filament, they need to mix them with a the color pigment. 그러니까 여러분 그 염료를 섞잖아요. 그 염료에 따라서 약간 재질이 바르고 그리고 여러분들이 그 and then 
PETG and PLAs are quite different, I have to say. So if you, PETG is actually a little bit more stronger, I believe, I, I guess, but we rarely use it. But still, if you have any reason to buy different material, you better to change it. But all other cases, you can maintain it as PLA. The wrong one, 아니라면 PLA 쓰시면 되고요. 그리고 all you have to do is just simply click this folder or file like icon, and then simply select the file, which is cube, is the one we just exported from Rhino. 그래서 이거 가져오시면 이거 바로 딱 들어오죠. So this is the file imported inside of any cubic. 네, 그래서 이거가 이제 보여지는 거예요. 이거 가져오시면 여러분들 위치 같은 거 이런 거는 if you want to change the location of your object, you can click this move object. You probably can see that this one you selected. And if this one is selected, you can move around. 이거 옮길 수 있죠. 그리고 요거는 스케일인데 you can also change the scale. 어, 그리고 로테이트 바꿀 수도 있고요. You can rotate object. But my recommendation, do not use any of it here inside Cura. Always change its location or any size in Rhino because Cura is not a 3D model editing software. It may cause more problems than its benefits. So if you simply move its location to add more geometries and print many objects in one time, it's just okay. However, all other cases, I recommend for you to use Rhino instead. 다른 거를 가급적이면 쓰도록 하세요. 네, 요거 아래쪽 그리고 여러분이 요거 어, 뷰를 바꿔보고 싶으면, if you want to change the view, you can change click here and front view and side view. So you can actually, there is some basic functionality of uh, 3D model viewing below and the left. 어, 약간 이제 바꿀 수 있다라는 거고, 여러분 오른쪽에 오시면, so if you see the right side of it, this is the kind of key important feature when you 3D print something. So basically I recommend for you, so, so far during all this class, we only use draft because it is fast. 이게, 이게 빠르기 때문에 그냥 이런 걸할 거고요. 그, 그래서 드래프트를 항상 쓸 거고, 뭐 여러분들 물론, 어, 여러분의 연구 프로젝트나 다른 프로젝트가 있을 때는 써도 괜찮아요. So if you have other project or other assignment that for any reason, if you want to make it more precisely, you are welcome to use it, uh, use other settings too. 그리고 여러분 설명해 줬던 것처럼 요거 20% 뭐 10% 한 20%가 보통 디폴트고요. 20% is a kind of general default setting. And if you have any curved shape, you may also want to use gradual infill. But as you see that this will increase the percentage of infill. So meaning that it will delay your 3D printing time. So I will uncheck it. 자, 요거 쓰면 늘어나겠죠? 그리고 always check support and adhesion. 그래서 이거 요거 항상 하도록 하시고 잠깐 커스텀 잠깐 들어가 보면 so if you click custom it will give more options uh, one thing you I always want you to check is build plate addition so far now it is set as brim but I recommend for you to always use raft and I will show the difference there's a 항상 이게 스커트랑 브림이랑 랩트도 세 가지가 있는데요. So there are three types of addition types, skirt, brim, and raft. And I show you one by one, but I recommend for you to always use raft only. So raft will give a single thin layers of 3D printing below and between the table and your object. So once I set it as raft, 이거 raft로 바꾸고, 이거 슬라이스를 누르면, if I click slice, It was slicing. 그리고 요거 잠깐 이제 어떻게 확인을 할수 있냐면은 go to select preview. Then you probably see this light blue. And then this one is almost one single layer. 
이거 잠깐 and then if you move around this bar on the right side of it 이거 오른쪽에 있는 거 잠깐 이렇게 내렸다 올리면 이거 단면을 볼 수가 있어요. You can see the actual section of 3D printing of an object. And if I go to this the bottom layer, this blue one is actually the wrapped uh, layer of it. 요걸 쓰면 여러분들 이게 약간 울퉁불퉁하거나 이게 약간 기울었을 때에도 이 레프트에서 다 그런 오차가 다 없어져요. 그리고 이게 면적이 많으니까 이 물체를 더꽉 잡고 있을 수 있어요. So when you use raft, this will actually observe any error caused by any un, uh, uneven surfaces of the table or any oblique angle of the surface. So I will always recommend for you to use this one. If I change it to raft to skirt, which is one of the minimum adhesion type, if I slice it, you will skirt it and slice it back and down. You probably see that one line is outside of the material. So basically, there is no adhesion at all. 그러니까 이게 지금 이 스커트는 어드리션이 아예 없는 거예요. So that's kind of strange, isn't it? That even if you skirt, there is nothing. Adhesive effect. Can you imagine why then there is so-called skirt adhesion time? 이거 스커트 왜 쓰는지 혹시 알수 알 있을까요? 이거 왜 쓸까요? 스커트. 캐뉴 이매진? 요 스컬트 왜 쓸까요? So raft is quite sure that raft is the the kind of uh, the most or the it will give the maximum adhesion effect. It adheres adheres your object to the table. 근데 스커트는 왜 쓸까요? 이 스커트는 왜 쓰냐면 the reason why there is a skirt is that uh, there are some leftover material inside the nozzle of 3D printer always. 그러니까 노즐 안에는 앞 사람이 쓰던 재료가 남아 있잖아요. 이 used material을 보통 보면 이게 까매요, 타가지고. So in general, the leftover material from the previous 3D printing in the nozzle always kind of dark and burned out. So actually those material, if it is used for your main object, you will see some kind of dark areas in your, particularly in the bottom area. So any 3D printing requires to remove any old uh, burned out materials. And then uh, you may want to use always fresh uh, filament. So the role of skirt is simply removing any old material inside the nozzle, basically it's clean up your nozzle. The skirt is clean up your nozzle. The skirt is clean up your nozzle. So brim actually uh, give a kind of boundary air. It's just 3D print the boundary of it. So basically it will the addition effect came from the, this adjacent boundary between brim material and your main object. So if you want to save your time, and then if you think your object has a large enough area on, at the bottom of it, sometimes brim is good enough. But if you have any smaller area on the bottom, brim is not enough because it, the adhesion effect only comes from this red line, which is the edge of the bottom layer. So be wise when you select skirt or brim or raft, uh, you have an option that you can choose it. However, in my cases, all the mart functions and failure comes from when students do not use raft. Uh, so that's the thing. 그래서 여러분들 이번 숙제는 항상 레프트 이번 우리 수업에서는 항상 레프트를 쓸 거예요. 그러니까, uh, whenever you use school supported material, it is required to use raft mainly to protect your 
3D printing and also to protect our 3D printer machine. However, uh, in case you use your own material, such as you buy your, your own material and you bring yours, uh, you decide what to do. 네, 학교에서 쓰는 거는 무조건 레프트를 써야 돼요. 이번, 이번 수업에서 제공하는 매트리얼은 다 학교에서 제공하는 거기 때문에 항상 레프트를 쓰도록 하세요. But during the class, any project that you're doing in the class, the material is supported by the university, then you have to use any time, you need to use raft all the time. 네, 그래서 이 슬라이스를 하고 하면은 이게 2시간 25분이 걸려요. Then it will take 2 hours and 25 minutes. So this little one will take roughly more than 2 hours. And then as the last step, if you click this save to button, then it says it is saved to removable drive. Uh, this is because I have a USB key attached on my desktop. You actually change this one to save to disk. Can you see the screen at the bottom? Okay, so change it to save to disk and then click it again and then save somewhere on your desktop and change the name, your full name, such as Park Juhong and then under slash week 01 and then Q. So this is the file name. You have to save it and then please upload it to the assignment link. So this is the first. Yeah, so this is the file that you have to. Uh, So this is the, the first file you have to submit to the uh, assignment folder. And the assignment folder is, please check it to the Facebook website. So if you go to a Facebook website, uh, I will probably re-upload the link probably at the end of today or tomorrow. So if you check about the 2022, 2022 week two class post, if you check, see the more, uh, sexy more, I will upload the, you upload the link here. So please upload to this link. And the password for this folder will be make. As I type in the, you probably know that what is the type spelling of make. So please type the, password when you upload it. So this is the first assignment. So from now on, I will a little bit go slightly, uh, I think we have enough time. So now let's go back to Rhino. So I will start the second assignment. This two one check on it. So you get the Tombanjo again, design got on a toy on his real So in for the second uh, project, I want to explain about the general design process or 3D modeling make process. So what we are going to design is a Lego brick and we don't really make 3D model directly as we did for uh, cubes making. So your cube 만들 때처럼 이렇게 바로 만드는 경우는 거의 없어요. So we actually rarely made any 3D object directly like this. What we do, always when you make a 3D geometry or 3D model, the sequences is starting from point, lines, surface, and volume. And if you wanna change volume, you, are, you need to go into edit surface. If you want to edit surface, you need to change lines. If you want to edit lines, you need to change point. 이게 전반적인 그 3D 지오메트링을 핸들링하는 순서예요. 
So, so far, what I'm going to, what I first to do is I will start to draw so called、uh, guideline. So, guideline, so I will change. So, first of all, at least you need to always have some kind of guidelines. And then we may have so called finish line. Finish line is what we have to do. We have to do the guideline and finish line. At least you're supposed to have at least these two layers separated each other, so called guidelines and finish lines. So I will activate the guidelines layer first by double clicking the name on this layer tab. And then, roughly, the object size that I'm going to make is, a, is smaller than 60 miller by 60 miller, millimeter. So, I just draw the boundary line first. So, I draw a rectangle in here, line, and it asks you first corner of a rectangle. I just type zero here, and then it will kind of start a rectangle from zero, zero point. And then, roughly, the size that I'm going to make is 60 millimeter by 60 millimeter. So, this, this first boundary line g i v e you overall size of the geometry you are going to build. So, the reason why this boundary line is important is because you are in physical world. When you use CNC, Or when you use 3D printer, or when you use any 3D or any making、uh, process you are going to go through, you need to know the boundary, the maximum size of the object that you are going to make. So, you can see the geometric size of the object. What I'm going to do is, I want to make a grid of 20 by 20 guidelines. So, what I do is I just draw a line on the bottom side one more and enter. So, to draw a line, I just select this polyline icon. All you have to do is click twice first one for the start line and the second point for the second line and enter to terminate it. And if you want to do horizontal line, click one. And then press shift and enter. And second point and enter. In this case, we already using object snap option. You can simply click one corner to another corner and right mouse button or enter to terminate the function. And to select this line, you can do either move your point. To this line, and if you try to click mouse button, you probably see multiple options, meaning that which one do you want to select? The reason why you have three curves is because I draw two lines below, and one is the rectangle curve. So I just select one curve, and then what I'm trying to do is I want to draw horizontal grid line, so I type offset. Offset is a function to shift a geometry into a into certain distance and direction. The offset is to get them on. You're open to go to Ongil Suga, it's like what that is a side to offset. Well, we took in our edge of upside or downside. Could you go so far? Distance is set as 1.5. So I just change that by typing 20 and enter. So now you see that this one will offset or move the original curve or original line to upside or downside to 20 millimeter distance away. So I just click here. I want to do it one more time. So select this one. To repeat a same function, simply press space or enter. So I just press space. And then it will repeat the latest function one more time. And then distance is set as 20 because it remembers what I did last time. 20은 다 저장이 돼 있어요. 하는 게. 그래서 제가 한번더 
20을 클릭을 하면 so I have two horizontal lines now. 자, 요거를 제가 이제 수직 방향에 대어 되고 한번 더할 거예요. So I will want to repeat on a horizontal way, a vertical way. So I just delete any unnecessary lines. 그리고 요거 라인을 하나 폴리라인을 so I want to draw a vertical polyline from origin point to a vertical corner and enter. And I can select this line. So now I have two curves. One is rectangular curve and the other one is the vertical line that I just drawed. I select the curve. I also use offset function. Now I can offset this vertical line either on the left side or right side of it. So I just move it to right side of it, 20 millimeter away and click here. I click the newly offset curve one more time and space button to repeat the last function and then click one more time. So now I have a, a kind of three by three cube with 20 millimeter distance. Uh, you may think that why that just grid of 20 millimeter, but it, it is really rare to use that kind of function. Rather, uh, you may want to your own guideline that for the final object that you want to draw. You get the guideline of green goggle. The yokoe, so now I switch to finish a line of the object that I want to make. So I change. I select finish lines layer and double click it to activate the layer. And then you probably see that the color is purple now. 여기서 이제 제가 그 레고 브릭을 그릴 거예요. So now layer is ready and I'm going to draw the one male Lego brick here. So now I click polyline and then since object snap is on with end an intersection point. No, I just simply draw very quickly this male block. And actually, since it is now become a close to line, and then you probably see this curved one. So this one is very quickly done because I have a guidelines that I need it for. 요거를, so now I finish guideline and I finish the 2D outside line. Now I change it to surface. You can actually either change it to surface and then make it 3D or actually basically you can jump into 3D directly. So to transform a 2D line curve into 3D volume, the function you can use is extrude curve, or you can actually see that there are many related function, extrude curve, extrude curve, all on curve, extrude curve, tapered, extrude curve to point, and extrude the surfaces. And actually there are many options, either one of, and then we just simply use the simplest one, the extrude curve. And once you select it, you can actually extrude either plus a side or minus a side. You can actually simply select either one, as you see. And now it said extrusion distance is 20 millimeter. Coincidentally, it is set as 20. I don't know why, but that's the distance we are going to use. And then if you see that direction, both the sides is set as no, if you click it, it will change it, then you see that this one will extrude both the size, which I don't want. So I just click one more time and I change it to no. And then so far solid is set as no, meaning that it will open the top surface, which I don't want because I want to 3D print objects. It's supposed to be close to geometry. So I change it to solid, yes. So now you probably see a new line representing that a cover will be made. 
and then delete into this currently set as no, meaning that it will maintain the original curve I selected. So, so far, this is the kind of general setting that we are going to use. So I just press enter to terminate it. So it's kind of difficult to see from the perspective in wireframe view, but if I change it to shaded view, now you see that this one is closed a male block. If you see another rendered view, then now you see that this one is closed a male block. To double check it, I just select this block, go to properties, and if you check its time, it's that closed extrusion, meaning that it is safe to 3D print. So now I kind of uh, save that. I create a new layer, which is, let's say that this one is male block. I want to change its layer to male block. So go to property and select one more time to be sure. And then I change its layer from finishes, finish lines to male block. And then now I finish this one. Any questions so far this process? It was really straightforward and easy, isn't it? 혹시 질문 같은 거 있을까요? 여기까지? 질문 없, 혹시 질문 없, 없나요? 답을 해주세요. <웃음> 진행해도 돼요? 혹시 어려운 거 있는 사람? 네, 별로 어려운 거 없죠? 오케이. Okay. So, so there's nothing uh, difficult at all until so far. So now I'll kind of I'll switch back to finish line layer to draw the female block and then temporarily I turned up I want to hide this male block so this one is hidden now because I click this uh, uh, light curve icon. So now I can, so you either way you can draw anywhere using this grid. So grid 이용해서 이제 female brick을 그릴 건데. So the process is same thing. So I just click on one more time this polyline. So I just draw a female Lego brick. using those intersection points. And then now this purple curve is another female block that I quickly make. Uh, I'll show you something a little bit different process, which is previously I just showed a single process using extrude curve to transform this curve into 3D object. But I just go through two different steps. The first one, I create a surface and then I extrude the surface to a volume. It's just one more step. It's not really necessary here. However, the whole purpose is just simply showing just a different process, that's it. So when you have a curve or kind of closed boundary curve, you can create a surface out of it. So if you go to surface, 그러니까 여러분들 평면상의 커브가 있을 때만 가능해요. So the basic condition is that this curve to be a surface, all these polylines or curves are supposed to be on a plane. Otherwise, it, you, you can't create a surface out of it. So based on the assumption that this curve is on a plane, you can use you can go to surface and you can actually use planar curves, which is it'll create a surface out of planar curves. If you click it, uh, you may not see it clearly, but if I change to shade it, now you see that I create I just created a surface out of a polyline. And then as a second step, you can create a surface, uh, you can create a volume out of this surface. 
And now what you can do is if you can also go to surface and then you can use extrude surface. I, oh yeah, you can actually extrude curve, uh, uh, ex, extend surface, fill a surface, surface planning. I cannot really find this. So I just simply type extrude. Previously we used extrude curve. Now I can, I'm going to use extrude surface this time. So now, just like before, this one actually generate a volume out of a surface. Uh, but this, in this case, there's a something interesting thing. So here, both size is the same, solid is the same, delete input is the same. But if you click direction, it will ask you, where is the direction? Basically, it's a vector. So for example, I click a start point here. And then instead of direct line, I kind of create an oblique line here. Now you see that this one creates a, a, an oblique three-dimensional surface out of it. I'll just try one more time. So let's say I, uh, I said direction one more time. And the base point is just one corner. And then I obliquely draw a line. Then as you see that this one is now creating an oblique extrusion of a surface. Uh, this one is very useful. When you create a car-like geometry or cups or mouse or like this kind of remote control, as you see that the bottom side of this one is actually obliquely extruded. So if you wanna create something and then uh, Historically in design, in design history, for so-called in a modernism era, meaning that everybody just make a box shape and then people are bored by box shaped geometry. Then re recently, like 10, 20 years ago, people start to design something oblique and think oblique design is more fancier and more beautiful than just simply box shape. And of course, now these days, people want to create something, a uh, free line uh, geometry. So if I just check about some recent trend in design industry, after finishing this one, okay. So going back, <laughs> uh, going back to, 여러분들 지금 그 박스 형태는 이제 사람들이 이제 지루하다고 생각을 하는 거예요. 물론, of course, there is a so-called uh, minimalism trend which is an attempt, a kind of a kind of design direction that goes back to sustainability kind of thing, but still a curved geometry and oblique geometry is kind of considered as more beautiful and more emotionally appealing than simply box object, but so far. 지금 하려고 하는 거는 다시 extrude surface 로 들어가서, so now I'm going back to extrude surface command one more time, so I type extrude the surface. Be careful not to confuse with extend the surface, which is totally different one, or extract surface, meaning extracting a surface out of a surface. What we are going to use is extrude surface. So now I simply change the distance as 20 and enter. Then actually I create a female object out of it. And now I create another new layer. Uh, I just simply change the name. I called it female block. And I change this object layer to female block. So go to properties and then change the layer from finish line to female block. So now you see that this one turned into green. And if I read click this verb icon to show it. So now I have extremely precise male and female block here. And of course, when you 3D print, you should not print as is. You should shift at least one geometry away from the other object. So I just simply, I can move it. You can actually either use shift button to move either following axis direction 
or you can actually move in a precise distance you want. And now this is the second file that you need to prepare. And I click the first one, second one using shift button. So what I did was select the first object by pressing shift button, click the second one. Or another option is we know that only these two geometries are above side of y x x y plane or y axis x axis so I, I can actually select the upper side of geometry by doing so i can click these two ob objects so just use wisely following your intuition and then go to file export selected and then change the file type to stl and i save this one as blocks and save it and tolerance the default one is good enough and press ok and you see this message is that file successfully saved and coming to cura i change share view i'm coming back to cura uh, I just kind of delete these geometries. I just select and delete it using delete function. And then now you'll be confused. All the icons are gone away. And then the reason why is there are three different tabs here, prepare and preview and monitor. So go back to prepare in case you don't see this button here. So I select this folder icon one more time, then open, select blocks and open. Then you have this new male and female blocks. Your setting will be okay, because, but double check. Dra I'm using draft 20%, support is on, and audition is on, and my audition type is wrapped and slice. And then it will take another two hours and then save to disk. But if you want to also check that you will whether it has a wrapped audition type or not. So simply double check it and then save to disk. And then your second file supposed to be your name. Week zero one and blocks. And then you need to submit these two files. The first one is lost cube, and the second was this block. So, any questions so far? These two assignments are your this week's assignment. Uh, and then, actually, uh, I tested this one many times, and then your blocks will work. Uh, how does it work? Is that um, when you actually join to this male and female block, actually you will break a little bit about the boundary because the, the kind of the, as I explained, uh, 이게 여러분 설명했듯이, 이게 조금 튀어나오긴 하는데, 한번 0. 0. 0쪽 다 해서 한 0.1mm 정도 오차가 있을까 말까 하긴 해요. So actually there's only 1.0 millimeter error these two geometries have. So if you actually, press hard <laughs> actually it'll go anyway it'll go inside um by breaking some geometry the problem is when you take it out it will be okay but you can recognize some damages to your model and next time yes it will go much easier and next time and then by by end of it it will lose the kind of holding uh properties eventually and this case is was, and then if you are unlucky, it, 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 I have to say that 3D printing is not really digital at all. It's kind of analog. It really depends on the property of filament. It depends on the 3D printer you are going to use. 
So many cases, the results are all slightly different each other. 그래서 여러분들 실제로 이거 해보면 어, 어떤 사람은 lucky 할 수도 있고 어떤 사람은 unlucky 할수 있어요. So some of you may lucky to be put inside. Some of you may not unlucky. So it will not go inside. But this week's assignment is simply that. And one last thing, so try not to be confused with each other's geometry. Uh, let's do one other thing. Uh, okay, so when you do your geo, 여러분들 다 똑같은 걸 하니까 이게 나중에 3D 프린팅 되면 누가 누구 건지를 확인할 길이 없거든요. So there's no way for us to really distinguish Uh, which one is which? So what you have to do for all those, uh, actually just, yeah, let's just use this one only, blocks only. So what, you, what I want you to do as an extra work, 우리 뭘 하나 좀 했으면 좋겠냐면, so let's add some uh, signature. <laughs> so we can know which one is which. Uh, So what we are going to do is, I want you to add your name on these two blocks. So we know that which one is uh, who's, which one is which. So, so what we can do is, what you can do is, there's a function called text object. What this text object to do? Uh, we are going to use this command also when you do your laser cutter project too to actually add your name on it. So if you type text object and enter, you can actually type something. So let's say your name or your last name. I don't know, your last name or your full name. So I said Park. You can change also their fonts, your whatever your style. And let's say the height is the, basically the height that it will be made. So far, our 3D printed object is about 20 centimeters. So I would say that roughly five meters is high enough to recognize your name. And then also you can uh, sort by middle or left side or high, middle or high, top, whatever, bold. Or you can do anything option when you do in uh, what processing. And as an output, when you, you are going to use curves, actually when you use laser cutter, but so far now I'm going to use solid. A surface is a single surface. So single surface cannot be 3D printed. So we are going to use solid just like our block. And then, I'll, oh, so the height simply means the text height. So we need to see that, but five millimeter, I think then you can guess what is the five millimeter here. So this is 20, so this is tiny little. And then here thickness is meaning the height of 3D printed object. So 10 millimeter to me is a little bit too high. So I change it to three millimeter. So it just very slightly extrude out of a surface. And then I would prefer to group object. If you don't check this group object, each spelling P-A-R-K will be separated. But if you select this group object or your name, all the characters will be selected as one object. So I select it, I prefer to select it. And then you can actually change some other options too. And then I just simply press okay. Then now you see that Uh, five millimeter height, but you probably see that depending on the top view, my letter sees correctly. If you move it front, the direction is changed. So you can need to think about the where to locate it. So I prefer to locate it on a top view. And then as you see that this one, since I'm moving it on a top view, the location is the X, Y plane, the G location is zero. So I locate it on somewhere. I just kind of eyeballing it and locate anywhere I, it seems appropriate now. And I click OK. And then I select this text object. Since it is grouped, it will be selected 
as if they are one object. And then I just move up. This one doesn't require any precision. So I just kind of move it so I can see it roughly. And then I select it to copy a geometry. I simply type copy and enter. And then it will ask you to point to copy from. So click anywhere here. And then it will ask you to the point to copy to. So I'm using shift button and I move it to the top side of my second female object. So now please add your name like this. And so far, I think it is a little bit too high. So I little bit, I move it a little bit lower. Very slightly, I can see that. So this is some kind of a additional cosmetic thing. So we can know the name of, of the, the owner of object. So this is the uh, assignment today. And actually that's it for today so far. Uh, and when you do that, even because this one is are actually uh, kind of like, a, oh, okay, let's take a look at this one. What will happen if you have a, some kind of multiple object sharing a same space, you will see something interesting thing. So now I save it, export selected. So I just file type STL and I said blocks with names and okay. And let's see it in Cura. So I select this object and delete it using delete key. And I change its prepare view and open. You want to block names or open, I guess I open the new file. And as you see that this, there's a name on top of it and using the same setting, your same, and I slice it. Now let's take a look at the preview. Now, if I move down, as you see that all the object in the middle, it automatically deleted. So what it means is even if we overlap some object in 3D model, meaning in Rhino, The Cura automatically calculated, but oh, let's do something, try something other than. What if I open, so I just import the newly exported file. So I want to figure out where does inner part disappear? Is it from the Rhino or is it from Cura? If I go to, if I re-import this block with name, which is basically a uh, match and then move it away. So as you see that the, the file that we export still have this inner part, but actually when Acura creates a 3D printing file, which is GC code, it will, it will automatically, automatically calculate based on which is inside and which is outside. And then it will remove any unnecessary geometries. Uh, this is quite useful when you create a kind of a complex geometry using multiple parts. You don't really need to blend them, but simply by locate adding an object and an object and object. Actually, it, you are going to create a simplified blend in one object. That's kind of how the useful thing handling 3D printing. This will not happen in other software. Only 3D printing will work this way. But okay, 그 다른 거에서는 잘안 되고요. 3D 프린팅에서만 자동적으로 이렇게 멀, overlap object will be automatically cleaned up, but not other uh, machines. 이게, 이게 3D 프린팅이 좀 약간 matured 돼서 그래요. The reason why 3D 프린팅 technology is highly matured 
these days. 네, 오늘은 여기까지고 질문 있으신가요? So, uh, cross finger, meaning that 누구 거가 되나 한번 봅시다. So let's see who's, who's one will work and who's one will not. <웃음> 네, 요게 요번 주인데, so due, due date is actually, um, so to be 3D printing, but this is not urgent, I have to say. So if you upload it, so what happened is if you upload for, let's just say, if you upload your assignments by Thursday midnight, what, because whatever, after six will be the same because our TA will not work after 6 p.m. until next morning. So what, whenever any day you submit it, the next day the TA will 3D print. Then as you see that, each person may require five, at least five to six hours. So meaning that it's basically one day. So you will get your 3D printing two, at least two days after. So if you want to get your 3D printing next Monday, you have to submit it on Thursday. So Friday, our TAs will 3D print and Monday, he will collect them. So 3D printing requires a lot of time management. But if you, but actually, the, but it's not really need to be hurried. So officially the due date is on Sunday, then probably TA will 3D print on Monday, and then you will get it on probably Wednesday class time. So you don't need to hurry up. And if, yeah, if you are here, probably I ask you to do that by yourself. But this one, so officially the due date, submission date is this Sunday midnight. Uh, any questions so far? Yeah, it, it's easy for now. Uh, so. Uh, um, is it more complicated if we just subtract our name from the uh, blocks then just uh, ah, uh, yeah uh, not really at all so that one is another it's better option okay so let's do that very quickly now so if you want to do any boolean operation so let's say that we want to subtract instead of uh, add instead of union for let's say I want to subtract it like like this so two um, Boolean subtract the screen. Sorry. Oh, uh, ah. sorry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. So here is going back. I'm going back again. So I a little bit. So this is the distance of Boolean subtraction. So I want to a little bit raise up. So I a little bit move up, and then to operate Boolean subtraction, if you type just bool. You will see Boolean difference, Boolean to object, Boolean intersection, Boolean split, Boolean union. So we are going to use Boolean difference is the one that we are going to use it. So the sequence is important. If you want to subtract something, you have to select it after. So, fir so first, make sure that nothing is selected. So I type Boolean difference and enter. It asks you select surfaces to subtract from. So this is the first one, the larger one. So I select it and enter. And then select the surfaces, subtract width, and then delete input is yes. It, it, you decide whether you want to delete or not. And then I select this text and enter. So now I'm not so sure whether you see it, but now this one is subtracted. So probably see that. Um, we will go through this assignment later. One of your assignment is doing this, but you have to mix use it. So this, let's call it like a mother object. This mother object, will be either 3D printing or laser, cutter, laser cutting or CNC. And the name object 
Okay, actually, I, I supposed to do. And then what you can do is this, this kind of this, like, let's call it this child object could be either whatever different something from mother object. So this one is known as, uh, so there is an assignment for you to later. Um, so this one is known as, uh, and this is one of the very fascinating technique to do. Internet through Toraso. This is known as inlay. You can do this kind of things later. So you can use two different material, one from positive, the other negative, and you can actually combine them together. So, and this one is even combining uh, wood and metal inlay. And you will create this kind of uh, decorative object. And you can actually combine two different wood or uh, this is, it's kind of like, there's a really long history making this kind of actually um, object. Uh, and there's one guy, uh, Zebra. Sorry. So the, I think this one is kind of all Asian country used for a long time use this kind of inlay technique. So you're highly welcome to do that. The key is that you the one of the reason uh, why I give you this assignment is that uh, you need to understand the nature of all three different digital fabrication technologies. Again, the 3D printing will add some material, CNC will remove some material, laser cutting definitely remove many materials outside. And then this will be successful only when you clearly understand those differences. There's one technique that only Koreans do from a long history. It's really expensive. It is known as Sangam. Uh, this is one of, it's almost like a disappearing technique, but it's supposed to be very high end technique. Let me see. Um, and there is a, this is something I really love to do. Uh, So historically, when they make uh, porcelain, yogurt도 있고, 그걸 뭐라고 그러지? 자개. 아, uh, this is another uh, funny. This is a kind of furniture art. It has been a long history in Korea. So basically this is actually shell. So they cut out very thin part of wood and then they also make a positive side of a decoration using shell and then they kind of combine them together. 요게 요새 그 아트에서는 많이 하기는 해요. So it's just one of the, there are some small number of contemporary artists uh, who use this kind of technique these days. And I have to say that these are extremely expensive. I can say that. Uh, so if you want to do some startup company who sell this kind of a decorative uh, art, I strongly recommend. This is a kind of like a 
computer art and digital fabrication, software design and hardware design, all kind of a converged uh, product. 네, 오늘은 여기까지입니다. That's it for today. Any questions so far for about this week's assignment? 네, 오늘은 여기까지예요. 네, 그래서 여러분들 그 네, 여러분 뭐 of course you are what well, how welcome to create your own design of uh, female and male blocks too. You don't really need to do this kind of dumb uh, Legos. 네, 여러분 자유롭게 디자인해도 돼요. All right. Uh, this is known as joint design. There are many creative three-dimensional and four-dimensional wood uh, joints in the world. So if you check about, if you are more interested about this kind of thing, you can actually go through joint design. Uh, and in general, there are very nice wood joint. You don't know what to do. I will see. Yeah, I'll just change it. Wait a second. They are really genius and creative. They have a good lunch, have a really nice joineries. So if you want to do something creative one, you're highly welcome to research this kind of area. If you don't have time, do the simple thing. <laughs> 이게, 아, 이게, 이게 진짜, also there are this kind of joint too. And uh, this is another very simple, but very uh, useful to study. It's known as Mortise and Tenon. So I will show some extreme genius version of this kind of joint. Uh, there are some uh, creative people who um, almost perceptually, there are people, there are a group of people who create this kind of, kind of the your joints are kind of ob joint obliquely on so three dimensionally kind of like this. Uh, even perceptually impossible to understand. But there are some kind of people who do that too. Okay, all right. That's it for today. All right. So have a nice week too. And okay, be careful about Corona. It's, it's almost so widely spreading. Okay. okay. So any final question? 혹시 뭐 질문 사항 어려운 거좀 있나요? 여러분들 그 따라가는 데 어려움 혹시 있어요? 영어 너무 많이 써서 한글로 해서 어, 괜찮죠? 쉽죠? 네. 오케이. Okay, that's it for today. All right, have a good rest of the day. All right. 수고하셨습니다. 네, 수고하셨어요. 수고하셨습니다. 네. Thank you. Bye.